don't call me Jiggy when I'm home, they call me Snowman. We ain't never home, but trick the city like the base, yeah. You know where to look if you're looking for the wave, yeah. Looking for the. Welcome to Euro Stepping Podcast, where we bring you the real deal with European basketball. Hear from players about their live action and experiences from their time overseas. Uh, my name is Alvin Snow, and my co host here. My name is David Dixon. What's up, y'all? We have we have a very special guest to interview today. Very special guest. It should be fun. It should be fun. Bring him in, Snow. I got you. So let's go with first team all pack 10 mm. in 2005. Okay. Mm. Euro Challenge Final Four MVP. Mm. Euro Challenge Champion. Mm. Russian Cup winner. Talk it. Two-time Czech Cup winner. Talk it. He got so many, he getting bored. Two-time Czech NBL champion. Israeli Super Cup MVP. Mm. Two-time Israeli Super League champion. Mm. My man's done it all. Welcome to the show, Chester Trey Murder Simmons. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. I'm happy to be the first interviewee for you guys. So, uh, you know, this is big, man. This is big. So I got to start it off right. I got to start it off right. We appreciate the love, my brother. We appreciate the love, bro. Thanks for being here. So tell me, man, what would you, because there's so many guys out there, man, who've been, uh, you know, looking at their options and going to play overseas. You tell me what your very first experience was like. Uh, were you nervous going overseas? Like, what was your very first experience like? Uh, shit, man. I honestly wasn't nervous because I didn't have no money. And they was, you know, they was paying. They was paying. So I was like, man, I got to get the fuck out of here, man. I got to get paid. So I remember going, I had a, uh, I had a deal in France. Mm -hmm. a Paris Basket. I had to do over there. I got over there, and it wasn't everything that I seemed. First off, they didn't give me no car. Mm. Mm. Second off, I had a roommate. Mm. Talk about it. And I was there for about three weeks, and I dipped. <laughs> when you said so, you dipped. Uh -huh. I left. I left. Okay. So a few months, a few months after that, they tell me my uh my roommate went crazy. He started growing his hair out, wasn't taking no showers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna say his name, but <laughs> I was gonna ask you, I was gonna ask you who that who your roommate was. Hey, like, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> On here we keep it real. So listen, we just gonna call it like it is, man. And Altron Jackson, man, I hope you good, bro. I hope you good, you know. But I heard you went crazy, bro. <laughs> hope you did, bro. Hope hey, it's you happened good. to the best of them, man. So. I, hope good, man. <laughs> I hope you good for real. So what, what happened after you left here? What happened? So, so you heard you heard he went crazy. Then what happened? Where'd you go from there? So I went back home, man. I came hmm. back home for I came back home for a couple months, and then I, that's when I signed with Greece. Mm, okay. So Grace was a little better, you know. I got, got my own car, got my own apartment, you know. Uh and uh, you know, I had a pretty good I had a pretty good season there. We went to the playoffs, but I got into it with the coach. Mm, that's something yeah, that's interesting. That's something we definitely need to touch on. So that's common with everybody. everybody. Yeah. yeah. Me and me and the coach got into it, you know, a little cussing match. They suspended me. <laughs> They suspended me, and then uh, the owner of the team, I think he was in the mafia or something. But I wasn't holding my tongue, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you motherfuckers ain't paying me on time anyway. Like, like fat, greasy motherfucker, like, I don't give a fuck. So, like, his boys had to hold him back. So <laughs> I'm at the house, like, I'm like, man, these motherfuckers might try to run up in my shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, like a week so, like, a week later, they uh, they brought me back on the team and they went to the playoffs. Mm. So that's how my first first year started. Right. 
Right. Nobody would have known that you would ever become what you became <laughs> if it started like that, right? Crazy. Yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. Guys, man, when they start off that rocket, man, a lot of people quit. Well, they, well, they got they got mad because they thought I started the strike because we wasn't getting paid. It wasn't me, but you know. Hold on, y'all had a strike. Yeah, we went on strike. Mama do enjoy was the one. Mm. Big fella. Yeah. Big fella. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that about the craziest thing you've been through in your time in Europe? Uh that's one of them. Okay. I'm sure you got a bunch of them. You spent a ton of time over there. Let's talk about some of that. That's wait, wait, wait. Of First of all, which 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 countries you all played in? Uh I played in France. Not with that team. I played with another team too, Antibes. I played with France. I played in Greece, Israel, Czech Republic, uh, Russia, and uh, I think that's it. Spain. Spain. Yeah, Spain. Yeah. You have any favorites of those, or any any that you just wouldn't Snow, recommend? No, no, you know, Snow. I mean, I know, but our viewers don't, right? Israel, man. <laughs> Israel's so beautiful, man. Yeah. I heard that. I heard about Israel, man, from every player who went over there that I know, man. They love it there. And I've never been to Israel from the years I've been in Europe. That's crazy. That's the crazy part. Never man. had the Euro Cup game now, Euro nothing. Israel's alive, man. Yeah. Israel's alive. <laughs> Israel's one of the places you get to. And you're not even when the season finished, you're not even really tripping on getting home immediately. You like, man, I'm gonna kick back for about a week or two. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm with you. What you love about Israel though? Or can we talk about that? You married man, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but she wanted to go back too. Shit. She was like, I would move there. Like, you know, it's just it's just it's just so laid back. It's the weather, everybody's friendly, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just the whole the whole culture, you know what I'm saying? We you know you've seen some wild stuff while playing over in Europe, man. What would you say the wildest thing that you've seen or experienced being in Europe? Yeah. We all have different stories. Like we've all seen and experienced some wild stuff while playing. Big, big Dad, before we get to that, before we get to that, because we're gonna get to that. Let's, while we're talking about Israel, can you tell us a story? Because I remember hearing something about Israel when you were there in the game. Oh, damn, I forgot about that. Man, I got hella stories. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so we playing, I'm playing for Halong. Mm -hmm. We're playing Jerusalem in Jerusalem. So uh, it, was a, it was a pretty close game. And I remember uh, – we're going down the opposite court and our, our bench is on the opposite side. So we're going down the court. And I remember I I shot the ball and I missed. So while I'm while we're down the court, the security guard runs and picks picks like a piece of tissue or something up from the ground on the other side of the court. As soon as I shoot the ball, it's like a big ass boom, like like the the whole arena just shook. Yeah, but bomb went off in the gym. Oh, somebody threw like a homemade bomb or something. I got the ball, the dude screamed and I and I like, you know, I like ducked my head and I looked over. He just screamed, bro. He was on his knees and flat uh he landed flat on his face. Bro, there was flesh on my teammate's shoes. Like, yeah, bro, blew his fingers off. Oh, so, yeah. so we all had to run. We're, you know, we're running around. We had to run to the locker room. I get on the bus. Will Bynum calls me. He's like, yo, what happened? I'm like, he's like, the TV just went black. I'm like, dog, somebody threw a bomb or something. On the, I don't know. If, I don't know if they was getting attacked or what. So. <laughs> you thought it was the war. But, 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 but you know what's crazy, though? Mm -hmm. That same security guard, when I was playing in Czech Republic, I was in Prague walking around. And I seen him. Oh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, 
No, 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 I thought my man was from home team, bro. He had, he had a cast that was like this, bro. <laughs> he had a cast that was like this. <laughs> No bullshit. No bullshit. <laughs> no bullshit. Was throwing up that <laughs> no bullshit. That's crazy. Yeah. You said you had another story in, in the in the tuck for us though. What was that other one? I don't think it was Israel, was it? Or was it? Yeah, I got I got two in Israel. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna, was I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give you the one where I, I brought Nate over when we was playing together. Okay. So That's we Nate go Robinson, to, y'all, for those who don't know. This is Nate Robinson. So we go over to uh we go over to Elite and play. So we had to fly over there. So we kept our car in the little, you know, the little parking thing. Mm-hmm. So we fly back and we lost our ticket. So I'm like, I'm gonna just try to go get a new ticket. So Nate's like, you know, he wanna be a rebel. So Nate's like, nah, fuck that. We just gonna drive right behind him, you know, because the thing goes up and down. So, so he tries to drive and it stops, right? It closes on us. So the dude gets out and he's talking his shit. So Nate's like, man, fuck that, man. Let us through, man. Like, what are you doing? So dude's like, no, 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 no. So Nate's like, man, he's trying to hold hold the uh, the door. So Nate's like, man, move the fuck out the way, man, so we can go, man. So they're arguing. He's like, I'm calling the police. So Nate hopped back in the car and drives and runs over the uh the thing but mind you do still by the car so dude acts like he gets so dude acts like he gets hit and he's on the ground screaming i'm like and i didn't know i thought he hit him for real so i'm like nate bro, what are you doing dog i was like the police is coming dude is screaming like help help call the ambulance call the ambulance i'm like oh nate dog what are you doing bro i was like bro we gotta go. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's looking like like trying to help him. I'm like, then Nate was like, man, get your ass up, man. I didn't hit you. <laughs> <laughs> so so we just broke through the thing and left, man. Mm. So yeah, y'all man. get him done in Israel. In Israel. Yeah. So this other story that I got. So me and my boy, uh, me and my boy Dior Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. <laughs> what happened, man? What's up with Dior, man? Dior Fisher, folks, and those of you who don't know, is a seven foot monster, super talented, um, played at all levels in Europe. Uh, but go ahead. So let me go in his house. So, 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 so Dior has his dad. So Dior has his dad out there, right? And I have my cousin out there. So, so my uh, so my, my my cousin and his dad kicks it a lot, you know. They smoke in, you know, whatever, you know. So so um, you know, me and Dior was cool, you know. We I didn't plug them with the dude that that got us for fifteen thousand dollars each and everything. So <laughs> so that's a whole nother story. Yeah, that's a whole nother story. So. We're in a club, you know, me, Dior, my cousin, uh, and his dad's in there. So I'm sitting at the bar drinking, and I see I see my cousin, like, move fast and, like, leave with some other dudes, and Dior leaving. So I'm like, hold on, what's going on? So I go outside, and uh, my cousin's like, you know, he's asking the little Israeli cats, like, what's good? Like, what's going on? He was like, we don't got no problem with you. We got a problem with him. So when they said that, I was like, oh. Uh, I'm going back inside then. So I go back inside, club closes. Dior's out there about to uh, fight the dudes. So, but I see the dude grab a bottle and and and, and break it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, bro, we got practice in the morning. We don't, you know, need to be on this. So we walk away. So I'm walking with him. So he's like, uh, he's like, hold on, I gotta get my dad. I was like, dude, your dad left, bro. 
He's like, no, 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 I got, I got, let me go do something right quick. <laughs> Bro, no bullshit. 30 seconds later, he has a gash from here all the way across his face. Mm. Split open. So we have to rush him to the hospital. So we go to the hospital. Police, police is there. They ask me what my name is. I don't give him my name. I'm like, man, I gave him some bullshit name. I left. Got up in the morning. The uh, the, the manager's like, you got in a fight last night? I was like, I ain't getting in a fight last night. He's like, well, Dior's in the hospital. His dad said, you got in a fight, and he tried to help you. Mm. He got, you know, he got sliced up. I'm like, man, hell no. I was like, I tried to help him. He was like, well, his dad tried to say he saved you. Like, you know, like, he <laughs> trying to make him like this big old, like, hero. I'm like, nah, man, I try to tell him, let's go. <laughs> he was like, oh, man. He's like, so we're going to have to get to the bottom of this, man. So ever since then, like I didn't fuck with him at all. On mm. that. Like, like he he like he like, kind of lost like his eyesight or some shit. I forgot what it was. But ever since then, I didn't fuck with him because he didn't tell them guys the truth. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I was kind of on that bullshit with him. Yeah, he could have cost you your bread. And what's crazy is that next uh, the next summer, the next summer I was in Vegas. So I was in Vegas with Chuck. All them guys. So <laughs> no, no, hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. It's just so folks understand, the guys he's referring to are the. Let's talk about who this Chuck guy is. <laughs> so we get so everybody's on the same page. So Chuck's like, Chuck's like. Rest in peace, Chuck. Chuck's like. I called him the black. I called him the Black Hulk. My man's done did, did about two, three bids, bodies. <laughs> right. He didn't got he didn't got hit. <laughs> he didn't got shot by the police. All that. <laughs> and he's oh. built like he's built like the Hulk. Where where's yeah. Chuck from? Seattle. He's from Seattle. He's from Seattle? I don't know him. Mm -mm. He's straight street dude. Yeah, he's That's straight. Street. Yeah. So mind you, we're down there deep. So I see him. So he's acting cool. So I'm like, fuck that, man. We about to, we about to take over his shit. <laughs> I'm like, we about to drink all his liquor and <laughs> shit. But then I seen him, I seen him a couple more times, you know what I'm saying? We talked about it, whatever, but you know, that's here, neither here nor there, man. But you know, so basically at the end of the day, y'all figured it out, squashed it. But he did cost me some money. He cost me a year at Maccabi Tel Aviv. Mm. He did. Yeah, he did. He all living, he's from, he lived in Vegas, right? Uh, I don't. I don't know where he lives. Don't care. I don't care either. I don't care either. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we were. I remember. Uh, so for y'all, those of y'all who don't know, I've been knowing Trey almost my whole life. Grew up in the same city, same area, playing against each other's kids. Went to middle school together, all that good stuff. So I've been knowing him quite a while. So I know kind of some intimate stories. So tell me, there's one story we need to get into about one character who's also played at a really high level in Europe. Uh, one notable, famous point guard from Clemson mm. named Will, <laughs> Will Solomon. Think about it, I think we all got stories about Will Solomon. Every single one of them. <laughs> We've all had experiences with him. I've played over I was about to whip Will Solomon's ass. <laughs> I believe it. I, I was at, was off his ass. <laughs> what's the name of the restaurant in Rishon that everybody used to go to? Oh, Soho. Soho. So he was drunk one night when I was in Israel. And his teammates had to like, come on, Will, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because he was acting a little too crazy for my liking. I almost had to put hands on him at one point. Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from, my brother. <laughs> you mind sharing that story with us? Great player. Great player. Great player. I don't know about everything else, but he was a great player. <laughs> um, but I, I always felt he had like some type of little competitive, little something with me, you know what I'm saying? When I got there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he's the oldest on the team, you know, 
he's acting, he got that old grump, grumpy guy, grumpy old man, you know? So, um, I guess hurt out there and I, and I go home for, for a couple of weeks and I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm just getting, I'm getting calls like, man, Will Solomon, Will Solomon's talking like, talking crazy about you. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't remember exactly what he was saying, but he was saying stuff to the coach about me in front of the players and everything. So I'm like, oh, okay. All right. When I get back home, I mean, when I get back over there, I'm a, you know, I'm a highlight him. So when I go over there, I ain't seen him for like three, four days. Like he didn't come to practice or nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, him and uh, oh, so, so I seen him outside with the coach talking. So this is my first time coming back from from the states and mm-hmm. seeing the coach. So coach, you know, I shake his hand. With Solomon trying to give me the little, I ain't even look at him. So I'm just talking to the coach. So he knew it was up. So uh, we're talking and shit. And and he's I can I can feel him looking at me. He wanted me to say something to him, but I'm like, nigga, I'm off you right now. Like I I, I want to sock you right now. <laughs> so uh, so he's talking and he leaves. He goes home. He don't even stay for practice. So he tries he tries to he tried to distance himself every time that he see me. Like you know what I'm saying. He didn't want to see me one on one. So I'm in the uh, I'm in the um, I'm in the locker room by myself. And he walks in, <laughs> he walks in, he's like, oh, <laughs> and walks right back out though, dog. I'm like, this guy is a sucker, bro. <laughs> I'm like, this dude's a sucker, yeah. I, I wish I knew what he, I wish I knew what he, he said, bro. I don't remember what he said, but it, it, it triggered me, bro. And I, just, I was like, man, I'm you not. You know what's crazy? And I, I want to, you, you mentioned it, but I want to say this. My man, this ain't no hate. No, there's no hate in this whole situation, but my man, has won European championships. My man has done it. He's really done it. But I think we all can attest to something is missing up up top with my man. Yeah, he definitely got a little screw, man. (laughs) He definitely got a little screw. I think I played, Will was over here in Turkey with me at least four of the eight years, maybe five of the eight years I was in Turkey. Mm. So we 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 you know we experienced a lot <laughs> together. Like I've I've seen him, you know, wild out <laughs> per se on the teams, outside the clubs, the streets. But a great he, player. He tried to he tried to and also yeah he tried to holler at me when we was getting treatment. We was in this little little office getting treatment. He tried to talk to me and shit, but I wasn't. You was off that? Yeah, I was off that. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh after that? You we talked a lot about Israel. I've never really heard any of your stories uh, from any other places, but tell me some tell me this. Um, this has always been interesting to me because I didn't have kids during the time I was playing. I have a son now, right? But uh, I kind of wanted to dive into what were some of the what were some of the complications with um, having a family and trying to navigate how to bring your family, not bring your family, dealing with the cold in certain places. Like, can yeah. you talk to, to a little bit about some of those things? Because these young guys that are coming behind you, this, these are the kind of things they need to know about. Um, I mean, it, it it was pretty it was pretty tough at sometimes, but like like for me, like I think it was easier for me because I'm I'm like somebody that I can always like I can be alone like you know what I'm saying of course I miss my kids and my wife and everything but like I can be alone and be straight you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. long as long as the money's coming <laughs> you know what I'm saying but like I think one year she stayed with me for like, like almost a whole year and she'll come at she'll come visit like months at a time like for one month you know go back home for a few months come back for mm-hmm. a month you know um but it is hard because you don't you don't see your kids growing up every day, you know what I'm saying? The, you know the FaceTime and that that ain't gonna that ain't gonna cut right. it really. You know right. what I'm saying? So. And you were actually playing at a time before there was a FaceTime. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Skype. <laughs> yeah, Skype. I don't know. I don't know if you were over there. I know because I know my first couple years, it wasn't even all that common to have a laptop. So. Oh, I was, I- 
Yeah, my first year, I didn't have no laptop. I had a sidekick, and that was it. Right, right. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what a sidekick is, back in the day, we had these phones that kind of flipped up and looked like a little miniature computer. Um, and that was our first, like, real wave of, like, technology, for us at least. It was like when the real wave hit. Um, so, yeah, sidekicks, I, I'm with you. One thing I used to always do, I lived in those internet cafes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How much money did y'all spend on uh, buying those minutes for the phones you had over there? Man, bro. The prepaid. <laughs> yeah. Now, hey, tell, tell, me this. tell me this. Trey, since you spent so much time in Israel, Israel is the only place that I played, I don't know if you had this situation at all, where the team gave me the cell phone. Oh, right? yeah. And the cell phone was already was paid for by the team. Now, I used to because I was in up and way up in Ashkelon, uh -huh. I had to drive like forty minutes to Tel Aviv, right? Yeah. But I'd be on that freeway. Boom! I'm on the freeway talking to everybody back home the whole way there and back. Now I get that bill. That bill's like two thousand plus. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the team paid for it the first time. After that, it was a wrap. They're like, uh-uh, this is too much. We're not doing yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. So they start they start tapping in with me like, listen, here's the bill. So have you ever had any of those situations where you ran up a bill or you broke something in the house or any of those kind of situations? Um, yep. Wrecked the car. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so look, I'm in Israel, right? I got I got my cousin Jay Black with me. He want a pimp. We want to sell weed, all that. So <laughs> he's get, he's getting a little his little Israeli partners and everything over over at the apartment. You know what I'm saying? This is when I'm at Maccabi. So you know I'm I got a nice little spot. You know, look at the water. So he want to bring him over. You know, kick right. it whatnot. And some told me like like I can't let him drive his car no more. Like you know what I'm saying? Like so I takes a nap. He takes my keys. Mm. Maybe like, maybe like seven minutes. He run, he runs banging on the door. I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, Cuddy, <laughs> I got in an accident. He's like, I got in an accident. I'm like, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I didn't think nothing of it. So I'm running around the corner. I'm hearing Messy Marv so loud. Bro, he flipped my car. My car's in the middle of the intersection, tipped like this, bro. Time out, time out, time out. It's going to be a lot of our listeners who don't know who Messy Marv is. He's a popular West Coast artist. <laughs> in Israel. <laughs> He's a popular West Coast artist. West Coast artist. <laughs> in Israel, though, that's the kicker. My man flips my car, bro. In the middle of the intersection, bro, twenty five thousand dollars. Mm. How did he flip it? What was he doing to flip the car? So you, so you know, so you know, you know, overseas how they how they do the red, the yellow, then yeah. green, yeah, yeah. And the green, yellow. So he said the lady came. She said he said he's seen her. He seen her on the phone, and she looked up, and it was yellow and red. She went through, and he went, and he got hit. Okay. The car just tipped over. I'm like that part. We, I, I get. I need oh, to know more. Oh, about, he said he I need to know more about where that twenty five thousand came from. Who had to cough that up? I did. I had to buy the truck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you and Jay Black still cool? <laughs> Your cousin? Oh, Blood thicker than water, man. Blood thicker yeah. than water. Then I can't come home. I get the I get the handmade. This is when now everybody's wearing them. I get the handmade Cuban with the the VS ones in the. I came back home. I, nobody had that. I seen him in the street. He's like, man, let me rock that for the night, man. I was like, here, give it back tomorrow. He gets locked up. <laughs> and pawns it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Ten racks gone. <laughs> what? Ten racks gone. 
<laughs> Ow. Yeah. Yeah. And you still calling family. I ain't talked to him about. <laughs> <laughs> Nuff said, you ain't got to tell us. Nuff said. <laughs> No said. No said. Yeah, man. So I know we've been on these wild stories, but I want to ask you a question, man. In Europe, what people don't know, the fans are crazy. Mm -hmm. Like the energy in those gyms are like no other. Because, I mean, a lot of times the gyms are smaller. But, man, it's like a home feel. What was the craziest best fans, what team, what country that you played for? And which ones was the ones that was on your head the worst when you go on the road? Uh, I would say when I was in Halon, we had some, we had some crazy fans. Cause Halon was like, Halon was like. Underdog. Yeah. And they was like, they were, they was hood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they was the hood Israelis, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so like every time we play like Maccabi, like it would go down. I'm talking about spitting everything. Like our our fans got suspended for three games because they was doing so much. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would say when I went from Halon and then I went to Maccabi the next year, they was on my head. They was on my head, bro. And then I would say a poor Tel Aviv. I put. Hapoel Tel Aviv, when I played for Hapoel Tel Aviv and played Halong. That's the team you're on with Nate, is that correct? Yep. They was, uh, they was, they was spitting at the cops. They was breaking the chairs, throwing them. Mm. But Turkey got some crazy fans too, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Turkey got some crazy fans. Yeah, I had to, I had, I've been, I was blessed to spend some time in Karsheka. They crazy in Karsheka. Karsheka might have oh. Man. Oh, that's who we played the championship. Yeah. Bro, they was like, I'm going to kill you. I was like, man, I got to get out of here as soon as the game's over. <laughs> you did. You killed them. Yeah. I killed them. But, you know, I was like, hey, I was like, I'm not going up to no club tonight. I'm staying in the hotel. <laughs> hey, man. Karsheka might have the craziest fans in Turkey. I think so. They, they, they. I could tell you a crazy story. This interview ain't about me, but I can tell you my experience in Turkey playing for Karsheka. We go to Istanbul to play uh, uh, Fenerbahce, right? Mid-game, it's a timeout. One of the ref puts the ball down on the, on the sideline. One of our fans runs out the stands onto the court, across the court, kicks the ball at all the Maccabi, Maccabi I mean, I'm not Maccabi, all the Fenerbahce fans. And immediately, all the Fenerbahce fans is on the court chasing him. All our fans come out. It just turned into a melee. We had to wait about two hours or something in the locker room before we could resume the game with no fans. Crazy. Yeah, that happened to us in Israel, too. And when I was uh, playing for uh, Pauk mm -hmm. in Greece, and we played Aris, our bus pulls up, fans busted all our all our bus windows mm. <clears throat> crazy man there's so many there's so many like there's so much shit that goes on overseas that people don't know about man all right. like, <clears throat> it's crazy man I, I done heard it i done heard a dude got ran out of israel a player like they was they was chasing him yeah with like knives bro <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's just like you said, man, there's a lot that folks just have no idea about. Tell me this. Um, speaking of stuff that people just don't know about, tell me, uh, what would you say about the actual gameplay stylistically? Is it how would you say it's the same? Would you say it's different? Uh, what would you what uh I mean I, I would say it's more team oriented than mm -hmm. you know US basketball. Uh, more aggressive. It's more aggressive than U.S. basketball. You know, you can get away with a lot of shit <laughs> playing in here, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, and we talked about this before, Snow. You know, if you averaging, 
if you're averaging 15, 16 points over there, man, that's that's big. That's that's, that's big. huge, especially you know, especially on a, on a big team, you know. It's rare that somebody's averaging 20. Yeah. yeah, and I try to tell Nate about that, man. You know, he's looking at Pierre Jackson. He's like, man, this guy only averaging 14 points, bro. He's like, bro, I averaged 30. I'm like, no, no, you won't. <laughs> nah. <laughs> brother, nah I'm I'm telling you. You're not just going to come up here to get buckets unless you're on the last <laughs> place team. No way, bro. All you want to get buckets. I mean, it kind of changed now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. you have, you got, you got Mike James, you know. You got Mike James. I mean, Dittman, Dittman did it, averaged 19 in Euro League, you know. Well, listen to what you said, 19. Like, right. <laughs> right. Like, right. That's like top score in Europe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, it's just but, a different you know, game, man. It's, um, yeah. I, yeah it's, it's, I used to tell people, man, sometimes certain leagues it feels like rugby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you gonna you gonna go home? <laughs> I done had concussions, bro. Split, split eyes, all that, man. One thing I can say, man, playing in Turkey, you got to play, play through them fouls, which I like though. It was cool, but you know, you go to some countries who like, let's say, Italy. Like when every time we play the Italian team in uh, Euro Cup or something. They don't, they don't, they don't let you touch them. Mm -hmm. Call they call the phantom fouls. Like you can't blow on none of their players. One thing that we we we've never had this conversation. None of us have ever had this conversation, to my knowledge. But one thing that I think is prevalent in Europe, man, it's a lot of betting going on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Betting is big business. Big business. Sure. So I, I don't know what's really impacting those whistles. Yeah, for sure. And we don't know who's paying who. Right. Right. I what would you being, say? Go ahead. I remember being in Croatia. The first dude I knew, he was like, man. I was like, what, what do you do for a living? He was like, I bet. It's like, what you mean you bet? <laughs> like, that's what I do. That's how I eat. That's why I you know, have money. I'm a professional better. I bet on all games. Right. I bet on you guys' games. I bet on foot soccer games. I bet on every game possible. That, wow. that brings me to a great question. At least I think it's a great question. I, I can recall in my time in Israel, it was the last couple games of the season. I had a guy I never met call my phone. Then he was texting my phone. Then he asked me to meet. And what he asked me to do was throw game. He said, look, it's not that big a deal. All you got to do is miss a shot or two. I'm like, throw a game? <laughs> so have you, I'm asking, I'm saying this to ask you, have you ever been approached with any, it's okay to tell the truth. I see it on your face. <laughs> oh. I, I haven't, I haven't uh, been asked that question while I was playing or in season, mm -hmm. but I have had somebody from China say, "All right, this is what we can do. This is how we can make extra money. All you got to do is this. You can do this. You can get an extra ten thousand dollars." I was like, "Man, there is no way I can fuck with basketball like that." No, I'm fucking with the game like that, man. No, I can't do it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I can't do it. No, you put too much time into it, man. Yeah, I can't do that, man. We we wanted to get into some of these other questions we have for you, man. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about. We talked a little bit about when you came over, um, and some of the different, like some of the difficulties you had. But we didn't get a chance to talk about any of the culture shock or anything like that? Do you have any, any experiences like that in terms of culture shock where you just got over and the food was just too different or, uh, you know, people the way, maybe maybe you weren't used to people kissing each other on the cheek or whatever the case. Yeah, so so when I, when I, when I first signed in Israel, you know, I'd never been to Israel, so I didn't know what to think. I thought it was, I'll be seeing camels in the desert and all that, you know what I'm saying? When I got over there, I was like, 
damn, this is nice. <laughs> this is real nice. Right. So, I mean, I mean that, that was one. Uh, the other one, that when I was in France, mm -hmm. and this is funny, uh, it was the first game I went to, I didn't play, you know what I'm saying? And it was like some of these, some girls just came up, you know, I was talking to the team, to the teammates, to my teammates and stuff. And, you know, I introduced myself and she came over there and just, oh, oh my damn, she liked me? Like, damn, there you go. I'm like, trying to kiss me and shit, bro. I'm like, what's going on, man? Like, <laughs> she was like, nah, dog. <laughs> Do that to everybody. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> bust your little bubble, didn't you? Man, bust your little bubble, man. She was kind of cute, too. <laughs> My wife ain't here. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, and Russia, Russia was a big culture shock, too, man. Um, you know, I mean, of course, I had fun because we won the Russian, we won the Russian Cup and we won the uh, Euro Challenge. But, like, just, it's, it was just how, how mean people were, yeah. you know, towards towards me you know what i'm saying i don't know if it was because i was different shade or you know athlete i don't know but you know they was hella rude um there was a couple of times where i was in the store and, like some old old ladies would just try to like get in front of me and cut me like while i'm in the line dog i was like yo like hey hey what you doing like what's going on <laughs> you know what i'm saying and you know i'm in russia so you know they don't speak no english you know and i remember one time me and Aaron Miles went to go, went out to eat mm -hmm. one night. And uh, Aaron so Miles, great, sorry not to cut you off. Aaron Miles, for those of you who don't know, great point guard, played at Kansas, is now a coach with the Golden State Warriors. He was the head coach of their G League team this past year. Not sure what his role will be with the team next year, but great guy, great coach, great player. So um, me and Aaron Miles go to this Russian restaurant. You know, we got practice, you know, early in the morning. So, um, so we have a table that's sitting by the window so we can see everything, you know? So we're sitting chilling and like, maybe like four Mercedes, Mercedes cars pull up, you know, in, in, in Russia. Mafia, the, big man, come on, man, the mob's coming. It's real. It was a couple of G wagons, you know, a couple of Benzes. So they all coming in, you know, we chilling. They over there popping shit, having fun, popping bottles, all that. So. So you can tell who the boss was because he's sitting there, you know. So he tells some one of the little workers, you know, go over there. He's like, hey, uh, <clears throat> uh, my boss, he wants to send you guys some shots over here. So we're like, nah, we're good. You know, we got practice in the morning, you know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So he's like, yes, sir. So he's like, um, he was like, I, I advise you guys just take <laughs> Take these drinks. We're like, Hello. yeah, we're like, uh, now nah, you know, we got practice in the morning, you know? He's like, okay. So he goes over to the boss. Nigga, the boss gets so mad. Like, he gets angry. He's yelling at the dude. So, dude comes over and he's trying to, like, be cool with us. He's like, yo, take these drinks. He's like, the reason why he's giving you these drinks is he's, he's like, um, He's like inviting you into, into our country. Like he's welcoming you into our country. So I was like, oh shit. I was like, we didn't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? We like, all right, we're gonna, we gonna take the drinks then, man. Cause he was, over, he was over there hot. So we took the drink. Man, he started sending us shot after shot, man. So we just, moral of the story is we was fucked up at practice the next day. <laughs> right. And, and that is different. That's not necessarily something you'll get here, man. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, now that you think about it, you know, I was like, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? They welcome you in, you know, to the country. You know, they're giving you, you know, drinks. I, I mean, that was cool. I wish we would have knew before, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, funny question. Not we're gonna kind of er, ski skirt. Um. We have. I see you got your do rag on right. Not your right now, right? Yeah. So I'm just curious. Is that do? Are you covering up something for because you haven't had a COVID cut, or are you dipping? How we bringing it? Oh, he's spinning. Come on, <laughs> <He's> spinning. <laughs> my hair, man. Okay. 
I'm Look, trying to, I'm, I'm, asking, trying to I'm, I'm trying to cover these grays, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm really asking, man, because I, we we talked about basketball a lot, and I just I wanted to get a little bit into uh, how COVID has impacted not only you, but some of the things that you've heard in the ways that it's impacted uh, European basketball. Um, I mean, COVID was it's good and bad for me. You know what I'm saying? Because now I get to spend a lot of time with my family. I get to work out a little bit, not in gyms, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, do my own little little workouts, things that I couldn't do while, um, you know, while COVID wasn't here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it, it, it did take a toll. I mean, it took a toll on basketball for sure. It took a toll on me training kids, you know, mm -hmm. in these gyms. <laughs> so, um, but we had to, <clears throat> we had to like improvise. So me and Aaron, you know, got that. Aaron, so, sorry, not to cut you off. When he says, when he says Aaron, I want you to plug the business you have running with Aaron. When he says Aaron, he's referring to Aaron Brooks, played at the, played at uh, University of Oregon, and then played Houston uh, State, twelve years oh, in the bro. NBA, and then just played in Australia this past season. Um, great player. We also played in high school together. Yeah. So, so me and Aaron. Um, I mean, it was more of his idea. Um, we got, we have a, um, a a training called Hoop Theory, so we we kind of got it from Orange Theory. If you guys don't know what Orange Theory is, it's a um, it's like this uh, place you go train at, but you do different things like mm -hmm. and it's and it's high rapid intensity interval training. Exactly, yep. high intensity training. So you do different things. You go on a treadmill. You, you hop off the treadmill. You go do you get on the you know, the Bosu ball, do sit ups, all type of different stuff. So, so we got like uh, ninety minute sessions with with like uh, thirty minute increments. So first thirty minutes you're gonna do like strength and agility, and then the next thirty minutes you're gonna do ball handling with Aaron and let and layup packages with Aaron, and mm -hmm. then the last thirty minutes you're gonna do shooting drills with me. For those so of you, you don't, not sorry, not to cut you off. For those of you who don't know, Aaron was Kyrie before Kyrie with the finish game. And Trey Simmons is known as a well-known sniper. So it makes a lot of sense for these guys to have a business like this. Um, so yeah. if you're out there and you're listening, do support, uh, bring your kids. It's a great opportunity to get in there with some great guys, some great players, great mentors, great fathers. Uh, it's a great opportunity for kids. Yeah. And I mean, and in those 90 minutes, they're getting, they're getting everything you can by just going to the gym and just working out. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And it's a good experience too, you know? Sure, sure. Talk, since you, you touched a little bit on um, that business that you have up and running, why don't you talk, talk to us a little bit about that hoodie that I see you rocking right oh, now. That, that true motivation. True motivation. What is that about? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's funny how it started because I was going to start it while I was uh, playing in the big three last year. Okay. So I had a logo, a TM logo. Mm -hmm. So I was going to make like, like, you know, some, some TM gear. So, but then I thought about it. I'm like, you know, that's not, that's, that's too, yeah. it's not, it's not broad enough. So I thought about, it, I thought about making, I think I was like, I just threw like hella hashtags out there. I was like, would you guys cop this? I was like, Try me, true motivation, um, too much, a lot of stuff. But so true motivation kind of like, it kind of caught everybody's attention and I just ran with it. So I'm, a, I'm guessing, I, I don't know, but maybe you can clear this up for us. Initially the TM was what, what we see at the bottom in the screen here, your, your nickname, Trey Murder, was that where it came from originally? Yep, that's where it came from. Okay. And then you kind of wanted to, make it a little more uh, mainstream appeal, yeah. give it a little more yeah. mainstream appeal. And, yeah, I okay. mean, and, I, and I think it, I mean, I think in it, it also fits me, you know what I'm saying? Especially like being an underdog, mm -hmm. you know, um, always overcoming these obstacles and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Talk, talk a little bit about some of that. Like, yeah. why, why do you feel like you're an underdog? What, where, do you, where do you come from? Where, where does that feeling come from? How have you used it to your advantage throughout the course of your career? Well, I think I think it came from I think it came from being at Garfield. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, we all. I mean, I mean, everybody knows that you know Garfield was is a is a is a high powered you know basketball program or whatever. But I wasn't. I wasn't the top. I wasn't the top guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you had Roy Dell Smiley. You know what I'm saying? That went on to USC. Mm-hmm. You had you had Ed Roy. That was one of the best players in the state at that time. And then you had me. Yeah, Will Conroy. You know. So I felt like I ain't gonna say I took the back burner. But, you know, I, I did what I had to do to, to be noticed. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't go to I – w- I went to four JUCOs before I went to UW. People don't know that. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah. So I went to four JUCOs before I went to UW. I averaged the most at UW my senior year. Didn't mm-hmm. get drafted. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's all these things. And then I go o- overseas. I come back, come back home, go back over there, and now I'm starting to like make a little name for myself, you know, over there. Mm-hmm. But I still feel like I should have been paid more for what I was doing over there. You know what I'm saying? So I always feel like I was an underdog and I was a, but I was achieving, I was achieving my goals, but I feel like I just didn't reach what I wanted to reach. Mm-hmm. If you get what I'm saying. Of course. So, so the dream would have been the NBA, I guess is what you're saying. But, but you, what you did was, instead of looking at that like you somehow failed, you used, you spun it and used it as motivation to just continue to achieve and thrive wherever where you actually were and make the most out of that opportunity. Is right. right here. Yep. Yeah, cause I, I, I've seen, I've been paying attention to some of the things that you said, and you, and one of the things that you post consistently is same opportunity different results. Is yep. that kind of where that came from? Exactly. I love that quote, man. Yep. Same opportunity, different results. And now, I mean, now <laughs> all this, all this stuff that's going on in the world is black, my, black matters. I mean, black lives matter stuff. It, it, exactly. It goes with that too. Absolutely. Yeah. So that same opportunity, different results, man, that that's like a quote that goes with a lot of shit. <laughs> No, I, I, that to be honest with you, um, one of the conversations I've been having with the mother of my son is just, he was having some issues in school this year, right? And I'm sure, Dave, you dealt with this. I'm sure you dealt with this with your daughters, Trey. Um, my son was having some issues in school, right? He's seven now, so it was just first grade. But he was getting in trouble a little bit. And he has a white female teacher. Uh, and his mom was kind of pointing more towards her as if the issue was just the fact that it was a white lady and she was having trouble connecting and relating. And my conversation was, listen, whether that's true or not, his job was to be successful, figure out how to be successful, period. Yeah. And it sounds like your message is the same. I, that's why for me, it really resonates. And I, I, lo- I love, you know, that you've been kind of, kind of branding that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Dave, how you living, big brother? Hey, man, you know, I'm doing good, man. I'm just trying to, you know, learn everything I didn't know about Trey murder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mitch, I remember meeting Trey for the first time, him coming to open gym when I was at you, Doug, before he even arrived there. I remember when you was doing your JUCO phases. Mm-hmm. I was still, I was, uh, what year did you graduate high school, Trey? 2000. Okay, yeah. So that was my first couple of years. My maybe my second year at UW. When you start coming up there to open gyms and working out, you had a. Uh, don't you had a cousin who played in the NBA? Uh, yeah, Donnie Marshall. Donnie Marshall. You and Donnie Marshall came to the gym one time and played. I was in the gym working out with. Um, man, he's a workout guy in Seattle. Work out everybody. <laughs> Yeah, Steve, Gordon? Steve Gordon? No, no, black guy. Hey, no, he's out. He is out. <laughs> he's out. <laughs> Did he hit you? He definitely called me. <laughs> he didn't call me, but somebody called him. He was like, hey, man, he's getting a little too close to Tari. <laughs> he might need to talk to him. Right. Now, nah, who's the, uh, what's it? Matt, uh, Tim. Me and Tim were working out in the gym. Yeah, oh. Manson. Manson. Yeah. Tim Manson? Yeah, the workouts are a beast. I worked out here one time. I threw up. I was like, I'm good. 
<laughs> this ain't for me. He said, like, he had me right, though. Like, right before when I was leaving uh, UW, about to go play in the D League at the time, he had me super right. Yeah, yeah. he's a piece, man. At How old is Tim Anthony right now? He's in his 50s. He's in his 50s. He cut. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> he's super, he looks like a superhero. Yeah, my man can't. My man can't walk straight though. <laughs> no, no, you know he had to have a hip. He had to have hip replacement. Yeah, he did. Oh, so he did. Yeah. yeah, he's yoked up though, man. Dude, man, anything else we need to ask Trey? No, I just wanted him to touch on all. The, uh, I wanted him to be able to at least share with us uh, whatever whatever he wanted to plug. I wanted him to plug all his business. He hadn't said a word about um, about what he's doing this summer. He got something real special going on this summer with a bunch of guys from the area. I don't want to say too much. No. Nope. Shaking his head. I don't like it. I don't like nope. it. Yeah, we can talk about it, though. We can talk about it. Talking about the TBT? Yeah, so I got a call last week, man. They, uh, TBT called me, was like, um, you know, they, 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 they apologize for advertising us and promoting us like that for the TBT, mm -hmm. but we didn't um, – we didn't get accepted because um, because of the COVID. So they went from 64 teams to 24 teams. Mm. So, so what they did was they, they brought back most of the teams that played previously. Mm -hmm. and just used those teams for the, uh, for the tournament this year. Mm. Except for uh, Money Mayweather's team. Right. That's the team that. Wiley's on, no doubt. Oh, so, that that is that is tough. Yeah, it was it, it, it was it's messed up, man. Because you know we was excited about you know playing in it. Everybody was mad, man. Everybody was mad. We put together a hell of a roster. I'll tell you. To I I don't know if I shared this with you, but last year I kind of went through the process. I sat in on a bunch of the phone calls. I did. I'm sure you did all this stuff too. Yeah. Uh, you know how they have those phone calls and email I did all of that right and I and I I put together a team and I start I started and then I just said you know what that's not really for me it's not my vibe so I just kind of backed off it myself so yeah. I was actually excited to see you doing it um, yeah. yeah so I was looking forward to seeing a bunch of guys from the area jump on a team and I just think that a team from here got a legitimate chance if done right, right win that thing you know what I mean yeah. I mean we had the most talented team in, in the in the tournament man yeah I think so yeah. You know, hopefully, hopefully next year. Can you talk a little bit about your roster? So uh, we had we had Tony Roden, we had uh, Andrew Andrews, but he said he wasn't sure if you know because you know, see. Uh, Upshaw, Upshaw said the same thing. Uh, Robert Upshaw. We had Ricky Lito. We had Josh Selby. We had Justin Dentman. We had Terrence Jones. Um, Bobby Jones. Uh, who else is on there? We had, nice we, had, we had a whip, man. We had a whip. Ricky Leto from Seattle area? No. No, he's not from Seattle, but, you know, that was, Tone, that was Tone's guy. Him and Josh Selby was Tone's guy, so yeah. they wanted to play with him. They played together in Poland this past year, I think. Yeah, and you're in uh, Champions League. Yep. Yep, yep exactly. Yeah. Both had great seasons as well. Yeah. Hey, Troy, man, how, how, I know you played in the Big Three last summer, man. How, how, did you, how was your experience playing in the Big Three? I felt like it was kind of like, it was kind of like the NBA. Yeah. You know, like it was, man, I had, I had fun, man. I did. I had a lot of fun. Um, first class, it was first class, five star, everything. You know what I'm saying? Per diem, you know. Uh, the only thing I wish, I wish I would have got a little bit more time playing. Because mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, I I had a I had a I had a I had a big impact, you know, when I when I was playing. I'll get a couple buckets and then he'll just take me out. You know, GP and Mario Chalmers, they they played together in Miami, you know. That that's the that's his guy, you know what I'm saying? You know, the twins, the twins. I'm better than Mario Chalmers. <laughs> Talk your shit. <laughs> hey, time out. Say that one more time with that same energy. I'm better than Mario Chalmers. Yeah! <laughs> bro. I'm like, bro, if I play as much as he did, right. there's no way, dog. 
I'm like, man, this nigga. My guys told me to tell you what's up, man. The twins, man. Them my man. Okay, Houston. Who? Edward and Emmanuel, the twins, Rashad boys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are my guys, man. You know, Rashad, that's my guy, man. <laughs> what's up, man? I told him that we was going to interview you on the podcast, man. It's like, yeah, man, tell trade, man. We said, what's up, man? Yeah, them is my guys, man. They came on a few trips. Yeah, 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 yeah. They came yeah. on a few trips. Yeah. It was it was fun, though, man. I'm not going to lie. It was fun, man. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know, like, uh, you know, going across the country and stuff, playing, you know, once a week. Like the fan base was was bigger than I thought, and it was a lot of it was a lot of uh, known people that was that was coming, like John Calipari, Bill Self, um, NBA players, Jim Jones. You know, Ice Cube was there, LL Cool J. It was just a whole bunch of whole bunch of star studded in there, mm-hmm. you know. But I remember <laughs> we was playing in uh, Atlanta, and I really wasn't playing that much, and. You know, I did parties with Jim Jones a couple of times, so he knew who I was. But I was so fucking mad, and I was on the bench. And he came over and shook my hand. I was like, man, shut up. <laughs> what he's saying is he actually had parties where he brought Jim Jones out in Seattle. Because yeah. Trey also has done a number of parties. He has, he has like, some. he's known to do some real good events out here. Oh, yeah, it's, cool. over with. it's over with for that, man. I'm too old, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what he's not telling you is I just got invited to another event. It's more private, but another event this weekend. So it's not quite over. Friday? Right. Oh, you're talking about the- yeah, I'm talking that's about that. Sunday. That's at the crib, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so tell us, man, what are some things that you're doing right now post? basketball career. I know you I know you got a couple of businesses that you're doing, some, you know, some extra uh, going. I know, know you got a clothing line or something. Yeah, as of right now, I got I got my clothing line, uh, True Motivation. You can go to true motivation LLC.com, casual wear. Um and then we just we just started uh me and Aaron Brooks just started the hoop theory thing. Um right now. So I mean, those are the two main things that I'm doing right now. And also, you know, I, I coach at Garfield High School. So, so you and, around the game. and they just won state championship this past year. So he's coming fresh off a of ring. Yeah, you know I need that. I need he, that he, ring. He man. just went all the way around, man. <laughs> <laughs> he God, is, God is just blessing me right now, man. <laughs> he he won't get his foot off our necks, man. He's just blessing me, man. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now, man. So and just trying to take care, just trying to take care of myself. For people who want to reach out to you and contact you, man, what, how can they get in touch with you on your socials? What's your social? Uh, Instagram, Trace. If you look at my name, Trace Simmons, it'll pop up. Um, I'm also on on Twitter. If you pop up my name, Trace Simmons, it'll pop up. Um, and that's about it, man. I'm not giving out my number. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about I think I think I've seen uh your clothing line has an Instagram. Oh yeah, my clothing line does have an Instagram. It's True Motivation LLC. Um it's doing it's doing pretty good too, man. Um we uh I did some I did some new gear um a couple weeks ago that you know people would love, you know, the the 1865 um, if you don't know about 1865, that's when the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. Mm-hmm. So I got the 1865 with the quotes on there, like, mm-hmm. you know. Do you make, do you make big sizes? You know, I'm yeah, gonna you know, yeah, I, I, make make size, I need that two XLT. <laughs> make big sizes, man. <laughs> Not the two XLT. Right. You know that T is important. You know. Yeah, that, oh. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you know Trey, man. We wanna thank you, man. We appreciate everything that you're giving us, man. Your time that you're giving us, man. The, the stories, everything, man. It was great. A great first interview. Appreciate you, my brother. You, man, it was. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for having me, man. If, uh, well, I'ma see you, Snow. But man, happy Father's Day to y'all. 
Happy Father's Day to you too, man. Oh, Appreciate man. it. I'm gonna come out to Seattle, man, sometime. He been saying Ooh. that. Listen, let me tell you, before we get off this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanna know something too. What's up? Dave, what do you do out in Istanbul every day? <laughs> Like, what do you do? Hey, he pushing rocks, dog. Yeah, I'm pushing <laughs> rocks on the block legally, though. <laughs> legally, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, man, we have a uh, other marble factory over here. A what? Marble factory. Oh, like for like countertops and stuff like that? Countertop oh, stairs, uh, tiles. We cut it up. It's like the game, man. I go get I go get the big bulk, bring it to the factory, cut it up how you want it. Ship it out, package it up. Man, I need, I, I need a plug. I need a plug on that, man. <laughs> going to be modeling over here. <laughs> hey, man, you know, shoot, what, what you need? If it's, need if, it's in, if it's in Turkey, I can get it. I need that white marble. If it's in Turkey, I can get it. We got white. I mean, that's a whole different subject. We start talking about marble. We're gonna go deep into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Going off the record. Off the record. Off the record. Then, hey, you know, I got a, I got a question. <laughs> are you guys Le LeBron James fans? Absolutely. Okay, you are. Absolutely. All right. I mean, I think he's a. Am I a big fan? No, but I still think he's one of the probably the coldest in the game right now. Okay. So, would you rather have LeBron James or Kevin Durant on your team? I'm still gonna go with LeBron. Yeah, I'm going with LeBron. Okay, we're on the same page. We're on the same page. <laughs> right, well, we don't want to have this talk with, with somebody we do know, huh, Snow? No, no. <laughs> but you know what? He's recently he's recently actually changed his tune. It shocked the hell out of me. Oh, wow. Just the other day, he hits me like, you know what? LeBron's better than I ever gave him credit for. He's actually, he's better than KD. He said that out of his own mouth. Blew my wow. mind. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's the I've never heard him say anything like that. So yeah, I, I couldn't hear him say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had many talks about that. Trey, again, man, we want to thank you for your time, man. Everything great first meeting, man. You know, great start to what we're trying to build here. Absolutely. And if there's anybody else, man, I want to put it out there. Is anybody else that uh you can plug us with? You know, we're always looking for plugs for new for, for, for people to interview. Hey, yeah, man. Like, I mean, I think I have I have a few players that you, you guys, you know, should 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 talk to. You know, we'll definitely talk about that offline. Yeah, we'll sure. talk about that yeah. off camera, man. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to Euro Stepping Podcast. Follow us on follow us on everything. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Euro Stepping Podcast, no G. Cause we got all the game. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>